Yeah, I tried to go American, but it's very hard to find what I was looking for, USA made. And I was willing to pay a little more money, but man, I went to an American company um, to find an aluminum jack. And even they offshore it, and then they still want like $700 for it. So I'm gonna pay $700 for a Chinese jack. So of course, right back to the freight. See, this is where Harbor Freight comes in in the clutch because I don't know why these companies think they can charge you $700,000 for a Chinese jack. And I mean, if I'm gonna buy a Chinese jack, I'm gonna pay Chinese money. So, uh, and I ain't talking about yen either. I'm talking about a little bit of dollars. So uh, these are some of my jacks that I've bought in over the years from Harbor Freight. They all still work and I've had zero issues out of them. I did try to go with a nice USA made aluminum jack and I'll tell you why. But at the end of the day, I, I couldn't find anybody that was, uh, I even went on Snap-on's website. I couldn't find a three ton um, aluminum American made jack. And the American made jacks that I did find they were not made out of a 100% uh, aluminum because I needed to be lightweight and, or it was a low uh, weight rating. And I need something that's close to three tons because I'm using this to work on fifth wheels. And uh, so let's talk about it guys. This was one of my first ones and you could tell by how faded the sticker and stuff is that it's, uh, it's got some years on it. This was a good jack short chassis, uh, three ton, low profile. And uh, this jack was good up until um, when I bought my Infinity G35. It was not, uh, the way the saddle sits, the saddle sits above the wheels and it could not get under my car. My car sits too low to the ground. So I ended up buying this attachment and to use on trucks because with this attachment, you can screw up the pads, hit it in two different areas, and I could lift the whole front of a car, the whole rear of a car, or the whole side of a car with the one jack and be safe. So the uh, these can come out to give you extensions, and then this can go up or down as far as the pads, comes with those pads on there. So I just converted that uh, jack, took the, uh, the screw out of the regular saddle, got rid of the regular saddle, and installed this Daytona um, cross beam. Put that cross beam on there, and that's what I use this for. So now this is permanently set up, short chassis for trucks, taller vehicles, and, uh, vehicles to where if I need to lift the whole side of the vehicle, I can hit it in enough points to do that or the whole front or the whole rear. So that's what I use that one for. Still works. It's a three ton rapid pump, has the, the dual pistons in the back. Great Jack. No problems with it. This was my answer for the uh, low profile sports cars. As you can see, the saddle sits in between the beams so it's able to fit underneath my infinity this is a long chassis uh jack versus a short chassis jack and it can reach way under uh, a lower vehicle and you can see where it starts to go up at towards the back so this has become my main daily driver jack for uh, servicing vehicles and stuff because it can go pretty high. It also has the, uh, like if you're jammed up and you don't have a lot of swing for the handle, it, uh, you can just use the foot pedal. Now, that's good for helping you get contact, but once the weight is on there, uh, you're not stepping on that. You need the leverage of the pole. It's, it's good to, the speed up contact. So if I got something that's 
a few inches lower than that and I gotta go that high, I can pump it up with my foot, make contact and then finish off with the handle. But as you can see, that is pretty high on that. And uh, with this one, like I said, these jacks are great. Now, um, when you buy most of these jacks from Harbor Freight, they only come with a 90 day warranty. So part of the low price you're getting is because of the lack of the warranty. So that's a 90 day warranty, but they do offer extended warranty is going to is going to add $50 to the price. So as you can see, these are great jacks that go very high. And with that um, cross beam on there and the, <clears throat> the pads giving you an extra three or four inches, that's making the jack go even taller. So great jacks. Now, working on campers, these jacks weigh a ton. They're very heavy, it's all steel construction, and I didn't wanna have to carry them around to do service, but lately here I've happened to throw them on the truck. And normally what I'd do is I'd have this 12 ton. 12 ton bottle jack lifts a lot of weight. If I need to get the height, uh, it can, sh besides the shaft, this screws all the way up. It'll come up to about right here. So you get some height right here. If you're lifting higher stuff, you can uh, take the jack and you can use the screw part of the jack and you can get a lot of height. So if your contact is higher than that, start with there. And then the shaft comes out about another nine inches or so. So that'll make this jack go this high. But I just end up using a block of wood if I'm having to reach a high contact point. And I use that on these as well. When I use these, it's a block of wood. Um, sometimes, like some of my older jacks that I don't have anymore, they didn't have, everybody wasn't putting these pads. Like this jack didn't come with a jack pad. And uh, the middle parts would uh, dig into whatever you're lifting. So I would use some form of wood just as a cushion, all right? So this has been my go-to um, since I've been working on the campers, but I find that it's slow, you know, you screw the thing up, it takes some time. And then articulating this, you know, it's a very short stroke. So it takes a lot of pumps to get the thing to go up. And then it's a pain getting out, you know, a little pair of pliers or something to, to release it. It's been good and it works, but it's not that convenient. Plus I kind of need two. If I'm working on fifth wheel, I'm doing suspensions and stuff on uh, any type of travel trailer, whether it's a fifth wheel or, or just a uh, regular travel trailer. Um, you kind of need two jacks. You need uh, one jack to lift the frame up, which is normally gonna be one of these big guys, but they're so heavy. Uh, and then you need a smaller jack, like the bottle jack or something, a little a smaller bottle jack to go under the axle, to hold the axles up after you take the tires off. You know, especially when you're releasing the leaf springs and stuff, uh, the axles are really gonna drop without the leaf springs and stuff on there. So you need a jack or some jack stands under the, um, the axle. The reason I'm using bottle jacks instead of the jack stands under the axle is because when I'm going to reassemble everything and putting the leaf springs on, I need to manipulate the uh, the axle. I need to raise and lower it to just the right spot so the holes and everything lines up for the uh, for the axles when I'm putting the uh, doing work on an axle, uh, the suspension on the uh, camper. Which leads me to uh, today's purchases, which is this jack. My box is over there scattered around, but I bought this two and a half ton uh, racing jack. These are not cheap. <laughs> Even in Harbor Freight, these are like $250. Uh, so uh, I really didn't want to pay that much money for a Chinese jack, but I did my research and everybody wants at least that or more for an aluminum jack 
for an aluminum Chinese jack. I didn't find any American ones that were two and a half tons or bigger. Two and a half ton was the absolute smallest I could go because I'm having to deal with gigantic fifth wheels and I need something that's gonna go ahead and get that tandem axle side up so that I can work on it. So I'm, I'm sure the two and a half ton, you know, I'm just losing a thousand pounds. So going from the three ton to the two and a half ton, but I get the benefit of having a truly lightweight jack. The, they have the three ton aluminum jack in Harbor Freight, but man, that thing is still massive because the, uh, even though the jack is aluminum, the pump, this part of it, this part of the jack is still steel. It has to be, you know? So the body of the jack and like the lifting arms on this one and everything, all that's aluminum. So they lighten it up as much as they can. So this jack only weighs about 50 pounds and I can deal with that. Plus it has the handles. You notice that the normal floor jack doesn't have handles because they don't intend for you to be lifting it up and moving it like that. You just pull it around. So they're, they're not concerned about that. But portable jacks, have handles they know you're going to be moving them around so i have this jack it was uh i think my receipts in the house but i think it was 250 dollars and then i added because it only came for 90 day warranty and i knew that wasn't going to be good enough especially you buying stuff out of harbor freight if you know it's something that you really need and you need it to last uh, you better pay the extra $50 or whatever and get the extended warranty. So I paid uh, $60. I had to pay $60 to get a two-year warranty, or you could have got a one-year warranty for $49 or it was $59 for the two-year. Who's not going to pay? The, if you're going to pay the $50, pay the extra $10 and get an extra year. Uh, to me, that was a no-brainer. So, um, And they keep all that stuff in the computer. So you don't have to keep up with receipts. They can look you up, they know. Um, just like the auto parts store. So I paid for the $60 for the extra warranty, which brought the price of this jack up to $300. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, Harbor Freight is not always as cheap as people think they are on stuff, uh, especially when you make the warranty step up to what uh, you would get like out of the Home Depot. You know, they sell aluminum jacks, northern tooling equipment i think theirs are like 350 but it comes with a one-year warranty um i don't have a northern tool supply that's close to my house harbor freight is close plus i know that i will get better service from harbor freight because i know all the, the local managers and i'm friends with the managers so i was able to do stuff in there that i wouldn't be able to do in a normal store like I was able to go in there and say, hey, Mickey, uh, I need to uh, I need to open up a bunch of these so I can lift them to see if it's a uh, suitable weight for me. And I see it's no problem. Immediately the box cutter comes out, starts opening up brand new jacks, takes me into the back in the warehouse. I, I start checking out these jacks because I need to get them out of the box like this so I can see if I can easily lift them, if it's gonna be feasible for me throwing it on and off the truck. So, um, for me, customer service is big. And when I go to a store and get that type of service, I'm going to buy it from them because uh, I don't think the other stores would have let me do that. I don't think that they would have opened two or three different jacks up just so I can deadlift them to see if I'm comfortable with the weight. You know what I'm saying? They might have tried to look up some specs and say, oh, okay, this one weighs this much and you try to figure it out, but that's not what I want. I want to know what the jack feels like on my back when I'm lifting it and they were able to do that for me. So I was very proud to uh, buy yet another uh, Pittsburgh Harbor Freight Jack. And I went ahead and got the jack stands too. Cause it's not good to lift those heavy campers up and leave them on the jack, especially if you're gonna be doing extensive work under them and you have to sit under them and your legs are under the camper. Probably not a good idea to uh, work on stuff and trust the jack. The jack may fail. I'm gonna put them on jack stands. Now I have several jack stands. I got some smaller ones there, some medium sized ones there, but I needed some that can raise up a little higher 
and I needed something that would comfortably uh, support the weight of those fifth wheels. So I got these six ton jacks. I, my other jacks are three ton jacks. I think I got some two tons and I got some uh, three ton jacks and now I have some six ton jacks. These are the ones that I'll be keeping on the truck so that I could work on the fifth wheels. So, and as long as you got some wood that you can, you know, you gotta have some big blocks of wood when you're working with this stuff, it'll help you out a lot. That way the, um, the reach of the jack isn't that important because when I'm using the jack, I'm using it like that. And they do sell attachments to where you can unscrew this and put in a, uh, a jack extension. And, and, but that makes it too bulky for when I gotta have a jack on the back of the truck. It's easier for me just to have a block of wood. So uh, I just go with the block of wood. Plus I'm getting way more surface area and you can kind of see where the frame has been sitting as I've been lifting stuff with this piece of wood. Change it out every now and then when it gets wore out. That's it. So that's what we got guys. I'll catch you later. RV Tech Pro.